You know, if you think about stucco, it's kind of a difficult assembly. You're, you're basically putting a sidewalk horizontally on the side of your building. Now, what do we like about sidewalks? They last forever. They're impervious. They don't need paint. There's a lot of good things about stucco. But on the other hand, it also has a bit of a bad rap in our industry because there's been a lot of failures over the years. On the build show today, we're going to take a deep dive into stucco and we're going to show you an assembly that's going to ensure that your stucco is going to last the lifetime of the house without problems. Let's get going. Hey guys, I'm coming to you from a job site here in Austin, Texas that my buddy Luke Mesger is building, Mesger Homes. Thanks, Matt. Luke, now tell me what's different about this stucco install than a standard or a traditional stucco install. Yeah, so from 10 years ago when I was doing stucco homes, mm -hmm. I've, I've learned a lot since then. And, <laughs> and, you know, we've seen a lot of failures with stucco homes around the country. Yeah, that's and right. we've, we've learned that best practice is to actually get an air gap between your wall and the backside of that stucco. And why do we want that air gap? Well, stucco when it rains it's going to soak up that water like a sponge and it's mm -hmm. going to hold it for a long time yeah that's right and why in the world would you want something wet standing up against your house for an extended period yeah of time? like a sponge on the outside of the house wetting the house constantly right. and then in texas too the sun hits it and then what happens and then you're going to get what's called vapor drive yep. and so it's going to even throw more moisture into the home yep um and so even though we might have a really bomber system, to mm -hmm. use your words, um, <laughs> we're going to put thousands of nails in that thing, putting this product on. Yeah. So we can do go into the nth degree of getting all the seals done, but then we're going to completely batter it with staples. Yeah, so that's right. we need to separate that cladding from the wall so that when water does come through, one, it's not going to make contact with it, mm -hmm. and it's going to allow to drain down the back side of that wall assembly. Yeah, it's, they, uh, we often hear that in our nerdy circles as a ventilated rain screen, right? But it's, it's basically just an air gap. And we've talked about it for years with siding and the benefit of doing mm -hmm. it with all those claddings. But even more important with what you're terming an absorptive cladding, right? This, this stucco is like a sidewalk on the side of our house, a big sponge absorbing all that water, and we want that air gap behind it. Now, how are you achieving that air gap? What's, what's the process you're using? Yeah, so on this house, we decided to use the Delta Dry and Lath product. It's a two-in-one system that okay. has a dimple mat already attached to a synthetic lath product. Okay. Um, so it's a, it was a really simple step. This goes on. It can be applied right over our zip system. No tar paper needed. It's yep. rated for that. Okay, so you're not, you don't need to necessarily put any tar paper up first. This goes Correct. right over top Correct. of your WRV. This is rated to go right on top of the zip system. Okay. Um, and it was, it's really lightweight. Uh, you can cut it with a knife, so you don't necessarily have to use scissors. And um, I'm sure this isn't an issue for the seasoned crew, uh, but <laughs> if they have a newbie on site and he's having a difficult time cutting that lath, he might get some nicks and scrapes on his hands. If one falls and oh, scrapes yeah. across his arm, he might be going to the hospital. Yeah, so this is, this is safer. Um, also, and, pro and probably no rust issues too, correct. right? Correct. Because this is a synthetic lab, it's not that much of an issue in our climate zone, but I've seen posts and, and stories about how you know maybe in a in a coastal climate you get a lot of rust in your lab yeah. and even if when i've done remodels on home, stucco homes before when we're tearing out old sheet old uh, stucco it's got a little bit of rust on it even in our climate zone but this is going to last a whole lot longer you're not going to rust out um, and it's a lot easier to cut yeah for sure mm -hmm. luke so these these nipples are actually facing towards the house this is a polyethylene sheet so this is this is a vapor barrier moisture barrier of course you're stapling through it and you've got gaps so there's going to be some amount of moisture that's getting through there but what it's ensuring is that you've got a uniform gap behind there now what's up with these bands that i see in here luke yeah so delta's done a few things with this product that's really helped install one are these bands it's it's the the, the fiberglass gets a little bit tighter together mm -hmm. these six inches on center and it gives the install guys a little visual marker to where they need to put their nails or staples gotcha. so we're going every stud and then we're hitting every six inches on this thicker material. Got it. And I saw your guys actually mark stud locations ahead of time. So when they're stapling, they knew where to staple. So Luke, why is the lath running long in this case? Mm -hmm. So that's another kind of production technique they had to help install. This gives us our required overlap. So whenever we run our second course, we now uh, have that overlap over the top. Gotcha. Um, they also provide this bug screen. It's essentially a really thick squishy Brillo pad. Gotcha. And this is going to go in on, on the starter first course. course. Yep. And then also at the top getting squished into the dimples. Um, so what this is going to help prevent, you know, that's, we don't want ants, we don't want honeybees, we don't want wasps. 
scorpions. You know, they like a nice, cool, dry place to live too. Yeah. And we need to prevent an area for them to get up in your house. But it's really houses. important to have that open gap at the top and the bottom so we've got that drainage and airflow to dry <laughs> things out. So then Luke, once this is on, talk to me about the process of the stucco. Is there paper that goes on top of this? No, that's it. So once this is on the wall assembly, they're gonna do, you know, most traditionally a three coat system. So okay. they're gonna start out with what's called a scratch coat. Okay. So what's going on behind us right now. They're gonna take the mortar, they're gonna get it on the wall in one form or fashion, and then they're gonna comb it off. And that's gonna give us a rough surface to apply the second coat, which is called the brown coat. Gotcha, so you're actually putting stucco into these kind of gaps and holes, and that's toothing onto that lath. They're pushing it onto the lath. Correct, correct. And that's what's holding that sidewalk on, so to speak. So that's the scratch coat. And then what are the next two coats? You have the brown coat, and that kind of gives the body to the stucco. I'm mm -hmm. not a stucco expert, so I might get <laughs> corrected on this. But then that gives you kind of, that's, they really level that off and trowel yep. it off nice and flat. And gotcha. then they go on with their finish coat. Gotcha, um, and the finish coat could be anything. You could have right. a, a finish coat that's integral color like I like. Mm -hmm. You could do a painted coat at the end. But the idea is you're not using the traditional tar papers or other methods on top of your WRB. You're gonna go straight from WRB to this, mm -hmm. and then the stucco guys are ready to install. So it's pretty quick to get this rolling. Correct, correct. Yeah, and this, this isn't a big job, but it took them one day to get all of the Delta product up, and then they could start scratching the next day. That's great, nice job. Now Luke, uh, now that we've talked about the install and the process, what are the downsides, would you say, of not using this? And, and do you have any good examples for us of, of maybe when it has not been used? Yeah, so I was on vacation a couple weeks ago with my family at a, a place to remain unnamed in San Antonio, <laughs> but it was a big hotel, very popular, well-known hotel. And on the north-facing wall of that hotel, it was chocked full of algae growth on the stucco. <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on there? So I hit the Instagram and asked around, and I think what we landed on is, is probably a combination of poor air sealing mm -hmm. and not using a drainage mat. Yeah. Since that wall was facing north, it was getting really wet, it, the sun wasn't drying it out, and then that moisture just promoted the algae growth. And the less amount of overhangs you have on the mm -hmm. house, the more amount of water that's gonna hit the cladding, the more amount of problems you're gonna have later. I, I did a blog post uh, maybe six, seven years ago about a building that was 10 years old mm -hmm. and tons of rot at the bottom three feet of the stucco install. And the paper that was used behind it, traditional, uh, you know, 15 to 30 pound, two layers of tar paper was getting wet and absolutely rotted out. It, it was overwhelmed. And what happened on that building was actually groundwater. It was a sprinkler mm -hmm. system hitting the house. Now that building also had problems at the top where the scuppers uh, were coming through and where there's no overhangs, a lot of water getting through. But a product like this is gonna give you a lot of peace of mind that your stucco assembly is gonna be able to dry and drain and get airflow behind. Yeah. And this is actually code in a lot of areas of the country like uh, the Pacific Northwest has a code to use a rain screen and I think a lot of Canada does as well. So I can see this being adopted more and more places. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking for a best practice stucco install, this is a great way to go, guys. You know that you're not gonna have problems when you've got this on there. Your WRB is gonna be able to function correctly. And even though you've got those thousands of staples, like Luke said, now that WRB can do its job and you've got that air gap behind your cladding. Yeah. Guys, if you wanna follow Luke and his work, I'll put a link to his Instagram feed. He's got a great feed with lots of good job site photos. If you want a link to this product, we'll put a link to the Dorkin website below. Big thanks to my friends at Dorkin for sponsoring today's video and for sponsoring the Build Show for years. These are products that I've used and have tested and love, and this is best practice when it comes to waterproofing. As a builder, water is my number one enemy, so I'm always looking for best practice when it comes to water management on my jobs. Guys, if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. New content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.